This is a ministry on the road leadership tip. Uh, hope that uh, this is helpful to you. Uh, I'm Bobby Gilstrap and I am a part of the Dynamic Church Ministries and we deal with leadership and training and that kind of thing. But today I want to talk about having just started uh, as a transitional pastor. Uh, I'm going, uh, this is a Wednesday, and I'm going for only the second time. Uh, Sunday was my first day, and I got to thinking how important it is to be able to intentionally connect with people. So I want to share with you seven intentional ways, keys to intentionally connecting with people uh, in your church, or it could be just about anywhere. So let me run through these seven real fast, and I hope this will be helpful to you and uh, others who may be uh, pastors, ministry leaders, leaders in your church, or even in some other way in a business. But first thing, uh, be open and available. Key number one is be open and available. Uh, and what that means is, is you need to be alert to all the things that are going on around you in a room. Uh, for instance, in a church uh, before the church service started on Sunday morning, uh, we were in the sanctuary and people are gathering and talking. Well, I want to be able to be open and available to them. So I'm going to walk up and down the aisles. I'm going to introduce myself as a new person. I'm going to find out a little bit about them. Uh, I want to be in places where I'm available. So I'm going to be standing around a hallway. I'm going to be standing outside on a porch, uh, wherever it may be. I want to be open and available so that they have a sense that, uh, especially as their new transitional pastor, that uh, I'll be available to them. All right, number two, the number two key to being intentionally uh, connecting with people is eye contact. Eye contact is so important. Uh, oftentimes when we're talking to people, our mind is kind of uh, somewhere else and our eyes are kind of over their shoulder or looking at several other people who are gathering somewhere else, uh, you know, right behind. Or maybe there's, you know, some, somebody who has a, a level of influence or importance that's standing a few feet away and you're thinking in your head, oh, I, I really need to get over there and talk to them. People pick up on that. They, they pick up on that really quickly. One of the most important things that you will do is to take the time to make eye-to-eye -eye contact. Look right into their eye, even if it's just a brief statement that they come and say, uh, Pastor, I'm glad you're here. Whatever it is, don't be distracted by those around you. Look directly into their eye and say thank you uh, and, and do that. Now, in that kind of interaction, uh, you can also do key number three and key number three is touch now it's a shame we live in the kind of world right now where uh, touch is uh, well there's so many issues with, with touching and so many things that have been talked about inappropriate touching uh, but people need touch. There's all kinds of studies that show people need touch. So you may not be able to, to give the big bear hug like uh, maybe you used to when you first meet people, but focus on trying to touch. Like for instance, somebody walks up, uh, you know, extend your hand. Now in the days of post COVID, some people aren't comfortable with that. So you may just very carefully as you walk up, be open to extending a hand and see if they want to do that. Some people want to do a fist bump now, you know, give them a fist bump, uh, especially if they're kids. Kids are a great way to interact with families and get to know them. Uh, the, the, the main thing is try to connect with them on a level that is their level. We we'll put it that way. It's a level that's their level, uh, and that means you know high fives and uh, giving them fist bumps and uh, you know teasing them a little bit, talking to them. Uh, uh, this last Sunday, one of the things I did, we had two little boys that were about three and four uh, brothers, and when they came up, I said uh, uh, I got their names, and I said, "Oh man, I am so glad you guys are here. I was watching you guys really closely uh, during the worship service, and uh, I was so." Glad glad you were there keeping your mom and dad from talking and they just laughed and giggled and 
and I said, I'm glad you're there to watch them. Are you going to keep watching them every week? And they laughed and said, yes, you know, and so uh, things like that you can do where you're touching and it's friendly and it's kind and it's fun, uh, especially with younger folks. Uh, and with older folks, you know, some of the older ladies for a guy, maybe you can give them a half hug, uh, something of that sort, but you just have to kind of be sensitive to that and feel it out. All right, point number four, our fourth key to intentionally connecting is find points in common. When you meet somebody, uh, get to talking to them, find out, well, you know, do you live close by or you live around here? What kind of work do you do? Uh, use the fire acrostic, you know, family, ask about family, ask about interest, I interest, ask about maybe their religious background. Have you been to church here before? Whatever, you know, the kind of a religious background, not in depth, you know, at a first meeting, uh, you would do that. And then E would be exploring, you know, a little bit more, but typically first meeting, it's going to be that F and I, uh, will be the first two, the F and I, uh, on that, but a great way to connect. And then when you find out, kind of what they do, try to think of something in your life or connected to you that you can connect with them in common. Uh, if you can find common ground, it builds that relationship and builds that connection very quickly. For instance, Sunday, uh, I met someone and the, the young woman, they had just had a baby about three months ago, and we were just talking for a moment. And I said, well, do you, do you work outside the home or are you gonna be able to stay home with the baby? And she said, she goes, well, I'm a teacher. And I said, oh, well, that's great. Uh, what grade? And she said, oh, first grade. I said, oh, that's super. And she goes, yeah, and I have off all the way through the end of December. So I'm so excited. Uh, and I said, well, that is really great. And then my response was, my wife has been a preschool teacher for many, many years, and she just loves the little kids. Uh, I know you love kids in your classroom. Well, that opened the door wide open. And of course, she shared then uh, how much she loved the kids. Now, another thing when you're finding points in common, try to focus on the name. Uh, get their name. Uh, now, tell me your first name and I'm not real good with names. I'm really good with faces. I recognize, I remember seeing you, but I have a hard time with names until I have something in common. I have a, a connecting point as such. So when that happens, what I end up doing is uh, uh, I, I'll simply say, well, now tell me your name again. And they'll say, well, my name is Bill or Bob or Nancy or whatever the name is. And I'll say, okay, now I'm going to try to remember that, but help me the next time I see you because I may not remember your name and don't take it personal. Uh, and, uh, but learning people's names is so important uh, because people find value. If they're valuable enough for you to remember their name, uh, they find that you feel like they're valuable. Uh, and that's really, really important. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, leadership number five for uh, intentionally connecting is allow for authenticity. Uh, when you're talking to someone and they start sharing their story, they start telling you about uh, some of their journey, uh, whatever it may be, it may be more in depth at a later your time and maybe when you first meet them uh, but don't jump in too soon don't redirect too soon allow people to be their authentic self and oftentimes you can ask back questions uh, when you're talking to them, you can kind of prod the story along. You can ask them questions uh, that kind of uh, reach into the emotion. Uh, even something as simple as, well, that's really tough. How did that make you feel? Or, uh, boy, that's a difficult situation. Uh, uh, I, I know lots of people have had to deal with that. How did you deal with it? And you're doing that to allow them to be authentic and to open up. And again, this helps to build that connection just in an enormous way. Uh, number six. Number six is pause. Simple. Pause. P-A-U-S-E. In other words, don't speak too soon. Uh, we need to learn that when we're engaging with people, sometimes we get uneasy with silence. But sometimes somebody is trying to share something that is, uh, for whatever reason, difficult. You may not understand why it's difficult, but it may be for them. And so their mind is spinning. They're, they're thinking, okay, how do I want to say this? And especially if they don't know you, they're processing through how much do I want to say? How do I want to say this? I don't want to come off looking this way or that way. Uh, I don't really know this person. 
So you want to pause long enough to allow authenticity and allow them to kind of formulate whatever they're wanting to say and finish that out before you jump in with a, a response or even another question. And then number seven, uh, a great way to help people feel connected is when you're in the midst of that story, uh, well, no, midst is the wrong word. When you're listening to that story, when you're listening to them talk to you, uh, at different points in that, you may be able to summarize. Number seven is summarize. In other words, you say back to them, don't repeat the whole thing they said, but you can say something like, well, what I hear you saying is that was so difficult because you were unable to do whatever. And that's all I said, but I'm summarizing the emotion, the feeling, exactly what they felt in, in that moment from what they're telling me. Now, what that does for them is that helps them to feel heard. They feel heard because I said back to them, letting them know I was listening. I was present with them during that time. You know, that's what the eye contact's going to do. That's what the, the, the brief touch is going to do. All these things are going to help them to know that you're present with them. But then number seven, when you summarize back, it helps them to know you heard what they actually said. Well, I hope those seven intentional tips uh, or helps for intentionally connecting will be helpful to you uh, in your leadership down the road. We'll look for another uh, time on the road to be able to talk about some leadership tips in the days ahead.